kind of thought that was like it, you know, except that I would torture myself by still looking at her Twitter or Tumblr, you know, especially when certain things would happen in the news or whatever. And I'd be interested the black feminist take on something. And that was the easiest way I knew to access black Twitter. Most of you who watch my videos would like look at her Twitter feed and just be like, oh my God, and just like immediately get cancer. But in the course of reading her Twitter, I would stumble upon tweets from her about me. You know, she never like used my real name. I knew it was about me because it would be like specific enough. I've like made my peace with it now, mostly. For a while, it really, really sucked. I was sitting there thinking, God, I really must be awful. How horrible it was to think that there was this person out there had this totally wrong view of me. I really worried and still do to some extent, not as much, like what she had said about why we weren't friends anymore to people in our mutual friend circle. I mean, she'd already dumped me, so maybe she just stuck with that story. The thing is, she literally saw like three tweets or something. That tells you nothing. So what I thought in early 2017, when I was really, really falling down the rabbit hole and what I think and believe now, totally different. Even two years ago, me is like a whole different person who I am now. I finally came to realize the person who was tweeting out these things doesn't know me. She's talking to her memories of me. She's talking to the anger that she still has toward me. And that's about her. I know that she was going to therapy for a while and I assume she probably talked about me and our friendship at some point. She clearly wasn't able to deal with it. I don't see her ever tweeting out about her part in our friendship ending. Like I just saw her tweeting recently and she said, I honestly honestly haven't gotten over my friend breakups, but it is what it is. Because apparently someone else that she was really close to, I think ghosted on her. And then she said, you almost expect significant others to leave. Like it sounds weird, but I know I would eventually heal if my husband and I don't work out, even though it a hundred thousand percent will, but losing a friend is a void you can never fill. I didn't leave though. She cut me out of her life twice. Just like the way she frames it as if I left. I mean, I guess I left the second time by tweeting some things where she like inferred like a whole like belief system that I then have. And not only like a belief system, but then I must then also be like a terrible person who what like kicks puppies. I never defriended someone on Facebook and blocked them on Twitter and just like waited to see if they would get the hint. So it's the same thing like with the guy who dumped me for my political beliefs. So you talk a big game about caring about the marginalized and women and blah, blah, blah. But like you treat the actual people in your life like trash. So like here are some things that she tweeted to give you an idea of her character. I literally haven't communicated to this person in three years and that was when I sent her the like I'm sorry email. It's been four years since that last email I sent her with the link and she tweeted this last month about me. As you'll remember in the letter I wrote her I said that I was an extrovert with anxiety too and she goes I had a friend who would not shut up about being an introvert and would always put extroverts down and then years later tried to be like yeah I feel you I'm an extrovert with anxiety too no ma'am and I was like wow number one I didn't realize I was being a dick I was probably just making jokes but it's never like there was a time when she said you're being a dick about introverts please stop she just like internalized it and like held it as a grudge or something also I thought I was an introvert for a long time because I had a really bad relationship with my parents as a teenager I was always like like hiding in my room and I had a lot of mental health issues. So I thought I was an introvert. And then through a lot of growth and healing and self-discovery, I realized that I was like actually an extrovert. And I actually saw her tweet something about how she thought she was an introvert, but then she realized she grew up and like had a traumatic childhood and then like discovered later in life when she was like looking into personality types that she was actually an extrovert. Amazing. If you actually spoke to me, you would find out that we have the exact same story but you don't talk to me anymore you're like arguing with a shadow you're out here tweeting to I don't know who the fuck about this friend you used to have that person that was friends with her doesn't exist anymore I've realized as well that the person that I was friends with back then doesn't exist anymore if she wanted to talk to me today I'd be happy to honestly but I can't really see how we could be friends now because she's so ideologically 
driven. I can perfectly accept her radical left politics because I don't find that that has much to do with the business of being friends, but she would not be okay with my views at all. The thing that really freaked me out actually was something she posted earlier this year. She tweeted, I think the most betrayed I ever felt was when a now former friend began dating a libertarian and started posting terrible federalist articles on social media. In parentheses, I'm also amazed at the speed at which white women can do the radical feminist to staunch conservative 180. So you don't know me at all because I'm not a staunch conservative. Yes, like I started dating a libertarian and then I made this shift, but it wasn't like because he poisoned my mind or because he forced me. I did not go gently into this good night. There was a lot of investigating through my own agency, own intellectual discovery, but she makes it sound like I started dating a surfer and then I became a surfer. But she didn't say I became a libertarian. She said staunch conservative, which maybe she thinks libertarians are staunch conservatives, even though a lot of them are just fucking hippies. So she said, and my friends who know I'm talking about are probably like, really? That was her worst betrayal? And in the grand scheme of things, yes. Yes, it is. The rumor she spread about cheating wasn't true, LMAO. Her being awful, true. I have legitimately no clue what the fuck she's talking about. Everything else that she has said about me on Twitter, on Tumblr, like there's been a kernel of truth. Not only did I never spread a rumor about her now husband cheating on her, but I also never ever in my life spread a rumor about anyone. Like I was racking my brain trying to think of anything I might have said that could have been construed as like spreading a rumor about him cheating. Like to who? One of our mutual friends from college maybe. But again, like I didn't say anything about him cheating. I wasn't aware that he did cheat. So that one is just a mystery. But this is like why it's really hard for me to be friends with women. I don't want to paint women with a broad brush. Obviously I'm not like this and there are reasonable women out there and I do have some good female friends, but this is the risk that you take when making new female friends. And here's something she literally said about me like a week ago. So she's still out there tweeting about me like she is not over it. She said, bad communicators are the worst. I once had a friend, I'm not a friend. I once had a friend who, if you had a conflict with them, they would ignore you from anywhere to a day to six months and would then send you a 5,000 word email on all the reasons you were shit. It became a running joke in our friend group. You never wanted one of their infamous, you betrayed me emails. I still think and cackle about the time they sent their sniffing and other an email while they were in the same room and then went to take a shower to give them time to read it. My goodness, I will say there was never a typo. So at first I was like, okay, maybe, maybe someone else could be the person that sends you a 5,000 word email and all the reasons you were shit. But then when she had the anecdote about sending their significant other an email while they're in the same room and then going to the shower to let them read it, I knew she was talking about me. And I'm like, let me just get this straight. You're the kind of person who years after dumping someone from your life with no warning for behavior that you were both engaged in, i.e. not reaching out to each other, and then you ignore the apology email that comes late and isn't exactly how you wanted it to be worded, but whatever. You drag that person on your Tumblr, you ignore them. You double dump them after you find out that you have ideologically split. Then you're gonna take the way that they used to be. You have no idea if they have changed, improved themselves, and use that against them, like attack them sort of anonymously on Twitter. Use that flaw in their past, like an anecdote that was told to you in confidence and you're gonna use it to like make them seem like a shit person. I didn't make this video to throw shade on her or make her seem like a shitty person because I don't know her now. I read her Twitter, but Twitter isn't real life. I don't know that we couldn't be friends now. I suspect not, but I don't know her and I'm not gonna pretend like I do. I haven't known her for years. I really just wanted to make this video to talk about the difficulties associated with like female friendships, that this is how they tend to end. They don't she's still out there like feeling hurt and betrayed and the funny thing is like I'm pretty sure if I tried to write her another email like reaching out she'd probably just like drag me on Twitter for it so it's not like she actually wants me to reach out it's not like she actually wants to try to connect or even just to like clear the air so we can both move on she just wants to be out there upset continuing to just like throw shade on the person that I used to be I'm not the kind of person now who is so bad at communicating 
communicating. I would write an email while someone was in the same room. But at least I was communicating. At least I tried. Like that's what I had to do at that point. There's no evidence in my mind that she's a better communicator. Like why does talking to someone face to face make you a better communicator than if you can write your feelings effectively in an email? Writing them in an email is certainly better than someone who doesn't talk at all. I think writing an email is certainly better than just defriending someone and cutting them off from social media and like not explaining yourself. That certainly doesn't seem like a very good communicator to me. But what the hell do I know? I'm just a confused anti-feminist libertarian white passing well-off bitch. I'll probably make a like a separate video at some point talking more about my experience with black feminism. In this video I wanted to be more about female friendship. I don't disagree with her about friend breakups, you know, that they're extremely difficult and you know that's why I didn't break up with my friend that I've known since I was 15. Like we've had periods in our lives where we didn't talk to each other and then we reconnected and I've always like renewed that relationship but not talking to each other for two months or three months or even five months doesn't mean that like the friendship is over. It just means that both of you like had decided at some point it was the other person's turn. Both of you were like experiencing some resistance to being the person to rekindle it because you both have some perception that you're the one like carrying the burden of the relationship and you want to find out if that person's gonna like check up on you if you suddenly disappear. And this is the complicated thing with female friendships. Male friendships aren't like this at all. Like with my guy friend, I had promised to read his writing and I hadn't done it. And I was like, I can't even talk to him until I've like actually done this. Eventually I finally was like, oh my God, like I just need to tell you that I have done the thing, but like, hello. He was just like, oh, hey. He wasn't like, oh, gotta defriend. It's a thing with female friendships. I can't think of any men that I know that would like not talk to a guy friend for a while and then just be like, well, I guess we're not friends anymore. Just gonna defriend him on Facebook and see if he notices. I'm still friends on Facebook with multiple people that I used to date and don't talk to anymore. And they didn't defriend me. You have to be like really, really trying to just gut someone if you fucking defriend them on Facebook. Anyway, I know this is like kind of a convoluted story. Sorry it took me so long to talk about it. I wasn't emotionally prepared to talk about it for a long time. It was like too painful. I still was like racking my brain trying to figure out what was wrong with me or what I had done wrong or feeling guilty or like a bad person. And now that I've kind of made my peace with it, I felt like I could share it. So I'm not out there sharing my political beliefs with a lot of women. I'll kind of test the waters on certain alternative feminist beliefs. Like I'll test them on whether they believe biology is a thing or not. So generally the women who are like scientists who believe in biology, those are women that I can get along with. So I'm not out here talking to a lot of women about my beliefs, but I'm kind of at a point where like if for some reason they found out about them and then they decided to reject me, that's just a sign that we're not gonna be true friends and like that sucks. But if most of my friends, most of my closest confidants end up being men, it is what it is. Beggars can't be choosers. I'm so lucky to have multiple people in my life that I can be myself with, that I can be authentic with, that I can talk to about all the aspects of me, not just some of the things that I'm interested in or some of the things that I'm going through. That's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a like. If you want to see more, subscribe, and I'll have more content for you very soon.